I'm here to discuss animals and humans. The opening quote, everybody knows who this guy is. Theodore Roosevelt quoted, common sense without conscience may lead to, may lead to crime, but conscience without common sense may lead to folly, which is a handmaiden of crime. While we're here today, other than I invited you to come, and thank you for coming, by the way, uh, basically is to educate and persuade, persuade my audience that to take steps of action to support animal research. And the preview is define animal testing, explain the types of testing, give counterpoint in, to my presentation and point as well, and exhibit a call of action in closing. What's my thesis? other than this cute pups. Okay. Human beings may fail to realize that non-human creatures have the ability to perceive pain and suffering and exhibit cognitive function. Therefore, as humans, we have the responsibility to protect them from, from harm by advocating testing alternatives instead of, human, instead of animal testing. That's my dog. That's my credibility. She fuels my passion for my animal. Her name is Molly May. Here's the animal. Here, the definition of animal testing: the use of animals in experiments to control the variables that affect behaviors of biological systems. There are four different types of animal of animal testing. The first one is pure research which investigates how uh, organisms behave, develop, function. Next slide. Applied research is basically used to do problem solving. Xenotransplantation. If nothing else, you all at least going to remember that term today, right? Mm -hmm. It's a transplanting of tissues or organs from one or organism to another. Toxicology. And this is supposed to be a fraud. Toxicology conducts how an experimental drug or food additive affects a living organism. Proponents defend the benefits of animal testing by showing how many cures to diseases now exist. And the National Academy of Sciences argues that alternative testing cannot account for extreme complex interactions. Molecules, cells, tissues, organs, whatever. Life. The three R's. Replacement is a preferred use of animals only when necessary. Reduction, the few as necessary. And refinement, only minimize the pain and suffering only when necessary during the experimentation. My argument is different. My first tenet is Charles Darwin argued for an evolutionary relationship between animals and humans. Carl Safina, he basically talked about nonverbal behavior, how animals communicate that way. And I wish that was my dog, but it's not. Basically, the death on Gregory Burns, he, he found that animals through MRI, they exhibit orphuria by cognitive recognition. And the National Institute of Health offers the opinion that mammals and low level vertebrae like fish, communicate pain through suffering and also through their motor reflexes. I had to give a shout out to the small creatures. Animals have the intelligence to recognize pain and suffering and, and the ability to exhibit emotions. And then therefore I propose that animal testing should be replaced with alternative testing. Time for a change of direction. Four different types. In vitro test tube computerized drug databases, computer modules and simulations, and non-invasive techniques, MRIs, CAT scan, microdosing, the Cinemico. Remember the acronym? Major differences in physiology between humans and animals. To toxicity testing is more accurate in, in humans for humans and it's more cost effective. Imagine the cost of having to take care of an animal versus using human subjects who are willing to come. And also the hope for the future is that animal testing will be done away with. No longer exist. What can you do? Another acronym. Financially supported organizations 
bipeda, ASPCI, name a few others, if whatever you come up with. Adopt an animal from an organization, by mice and ASPCA animal. So is Wendy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Contact your Congress member to ask for their support. And don't buy any products from companies that do these animal testing. Everybody knows see this guy is. Thomas invented the light bulb, but he also said this too. Nonviolence leads to the highest ethics, which is a goal of all evolution. Until we stop harming all living beings, we are still savages. And then the ethical issues help us determine our relationship with animals. And it's also a defense, it also determines ecology as well. And then think about the quotes given by Theodore Roosevelt and Thomas Edison today. The main points, another four. I like, I like the series of four because it makes it simple. Define the types of testing, share ethical viewpoints, present my arguments and give factual support, and ask for a call of action. A couple of, couple of things to keep in mind. There's creatures like him that deserve to be, that basically they deserve to live. They deserve to enjoy life and be monkeys and whatever whatever else they're supposed to be. Closing thought, keep, in mind, keep an open mind to entertain the notion that all creatures deserve protection because they are God's creatures. And I'd like to wrap up my speech today by showing you this magazine. Bought this on, 4th of July, and I, I like you, I like to challenge y'all to take time to read and figure out what's in the animal's mind, because there's a lot of things in there that may challenge you and really make you think. Thank you.